Hi everyone, in this short video I hope to demonstrate the use of GeoGebra to dynamically model these parametric equations. So I have this equation here for a position vector r, 6 sine t plus 3 times i hat plus 6 cosine t minus 2 j hat. I've taken the time derivative of this to be velocity obviously, and then Oh, I forgot to write that this was the time derivative of v, but it is the time derivative of cosine, etc, etc. So I have position, velocity and acceleration all as parametric equations. Now, to begin with, I'll start by saying, say, t equals 10. And then automatically I get a lovely little slider here by default. Uh, I'll probably want to check the settings on that slider and I don't like the idea of negative time, so I'll start from zero. And instead of going all the way just to some arbitrary number like 20, because these are periodic functions, I'll make that a multiple of 2 pi. So let's make that 6 times pi. And the increment, well, let's make that a fraction of pi. Let's make the increments a 20th of pi, so that it steps nicely around. Here we go. And there's my slider. Excellent. Now. I want to capture this first equation, don't I? So I'm going to make a point with this as the x-coordinate and this is the y-coordinate. And I might as well just call it point P, capital letter, remember, then some brackets, and I'll literally type 6 by the sine of t plus 3, then hit the comma for the y-coordinate, and this is where I'll come over and write 6 cosine of t take 2 asterisk uh, there it turns into multiply it. 6 cosine of t take 2 and that's my point p now I realize of course this is a vector equation and we can make this into a vector so r is my choice and the keyword is vector and I will simply say point p there's my vector r and I don't even need point p to be on display point p can just be disappear it's like a of my construction. That's the vector. And as time advances, there we go, and I could even just hit the little play button there, the tip of the vector traces out a circle. Now it would be an interesting exercise to calculate the Cartesian equation of that circle, but that's really not what I was wanting to demonstrate today. I was wanting to show how we could do these. So let's now do vector v. Again, I'll do the idea of a point. So I'll go for point Q, capital letters for points, lowercase letters for other, other things. And this is 6 by the cosine of t. And then the y coordinate is negative 6 by the sine of t. And that's my point Q. Now, of course, that's in relation to the origin, but really what I would like, I would like to have, and that represents the velocity. When the particle is located at this point, I might put point back, P back, point P can be my particle. When the particle is located at this point, its, its velocity is a vector that would go from the origin to that point. So it's horizontal and of length six. Normally, if I draw a velocity vector, I put the tail of the vector there at point P. Now, I can, I can do that. V for velocity equals vector. Notice that I can have a start point and an end point. So, I'll start this vector. Its tail will start at point P. Now, where do I want it to get to? I want it to get, in relation to the origin, all the way across to there, which would be at the point or the vector of p plus q. So that'll be my end point, p plus q. There's my velocity vector. Uh, I'll turn off point q, but I'll leave point p visible this time. And as I play this now, you can see that GeoGebra dynamically updates the values of point p and point q, so it keeps drawing the velocity vector in the right location in relation to where the point is. Now we can do acceleration. Again, I'll use a point, point R. The acceleration is negative 6 by the sine of t. And the y-coordinate is negative 6 by the cosine of t. 
there's point R, and again, that's in relation to the origin. Now, I wouldn't, I, I would want my acceleration vector drawn from point P. So I'll do the same trick. A for acceleration equals a vector starting at point P and going to a point which is the equivalent of P plus R. So instead of downwards by six steps from the origin, downwards by six steps from P. That's my acceleration. And I really don't need point R to be sitting there anymore. And now I can draw... There's my point P moving in two-dimensional space, the xy plane. And I've got its position vector R, its velocity vector V, and its acceleration vector A dynamically drawn there as it moves. The only other thing that I'd like to do, just for fun, let's change point P to be bright red. And let's go to the settings for point... Oh, there it is, showing the trace. As point P moves, it'll leave a little trace behind about where it's been. Isn't that lovely? And uh, let's just try to stop it there. Oh, stopped after two rotations. Don't know why that little menu is still there. That's a nuisance. There you go. So clearly point P is travelling in circular motion. And you may have noticed that the velocity is always tangent to the circular trajectory and the acceleration vector is always at right angles to the velocity. And that's another interesting thing you could explore in the future, perhaps, if you wanted to prove that the acceleration and velocity vectors were always perpendicular. I'll leave you to think about how you would prove that this vector and this vector are always perpendicular to one another, no matter what the value of time. Well, that's it for now. A very quick little demo about how to use GeoGebra to do some modelling dynamically of these lovely parametric equations. Thanks for watching.